with his son, Sunshine's on the good. That's why the Tory party live in a deep, dark cave. So thanks for coming out today and thanks for this expression of solidarity to our union. For the expression of solidarity to each other. There are demonstrations, spontaneous demonstrations of rallies like this one in Scotland, all over England, in Wales. Not just for railway workers, but for the very idea that we can organise ourselves and fight back against this suppression of wages, against the stripping out of contracts of employment in terms of conditions, about the robbery of our pension funds, and against the division that this Tory party and the bosses in this country are trying to promote in our society. And what do they say to us in these interviews? They say, how can your cleaners get a pay rise? Why do they deserve a pay rise? Well, what do they think is going to happen if our people don't get a pay rise? Is it going to go to these mighty workers? Is it going to be transferred somehow from one set of workers to another? Well, I'll tell you what the answer is. The answer is a redistribution of wealth in this country. That's what we need. is rampant. But what else is rampant? Profit has never been higher. We've never had so many billionaires in this society. The super rich are getting richer and richer year after year. The workers are getting poorer year on year. And what do we say? We refuse to be poor anymore. You've probably heard it. But they're common to every worker in this country. They want to make us redundant whenever it's convenient for them. They want to strip out our terms and conditions, just like at P&O. They're saying to us, either accept this new contract or go out the door. We're not having it. We negotiated those contracts, those terms and conditions, and we are going to defend them every step of the way. A pay rise. I've never heard such a load of nonsense in all my life. These men and women from Mighty, we've taken Mighty on at St Pancras, we've taken them on in King's Cross, we'll take them on in Paddington, we'll take them on anywhere that they come on the railway. Because this is the method of super exploitation. Outsourcing is the biggest evil in the workplace in this country. and all these other outsourced companies are being ripped off and virtually enslaved by these companies. We're not going to have it any longer. You don't have to be a social scientist to work out who's getting these poor contracts. The black people, the migrant people, the people from minorities are suffering disproportionately. And in the public services, in education, in care, in transport should be on a single contract of employment. Common terms and conditions, common agreements on holidays, sick pay and pension. That's what we used to have and that's what we want back. That's modernisation. I was hoping to get a couple of uh, Decent press releases and maybe a little clip on BBC Radio Pocketshire. <laughs> but it's been a snowball. And I don't know if a snowball is, this is the wrong uh, analogy. I think. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> this is a snowball that's going to lead to a lot of momentum because workers are inspired. And what we need to do is make this a simmering summer of campaigning. <laughs> us. Yes. We create all of the wealth in this society. Yes. All of it. Yes. It's our labour that delivers the services, makes the goods, distributes them and gets them to the people. All we want is our fair share of that. Yes. The rich 
the powerful have got to realise that we need redistribution, we need progressive taxation, we need minimum standards of work, we need a bill of rights for workers. Yeah. That's what we need. So I can't fire we have. Keir Starmer and others, they're hesitating. I don't know why they're hesitating. If you could draw a crowd like this with what he says, you'd be doing well. That's what we've got. We, he must win, but we've got to push him and persuade him to get into a position where he's in the front rank, front rank with you, all of you. Assisting with us, identifying with our causes, identifying with equality in the workplace, identifying with unity. And we cannot be divided. Do not fall for the tricks of the media. Trying to play a nurse against a railway worker, trying to play a cleaner off against a caterer. It's absolute nonsense. We are a rainbow. We come from all over the world. And everyone is welcome in this country. In our churches, our temples, our mosques, wherever we are active, we bring unity. We play sport together. We love one another. We can't help that <laughs> on occasion. <laughs> but we've got to bring that unity to the workplace and we must use our trade unions. My union is 150 years old. It started with old geezers like me in starch collars and handlebar moustaches. It's got to change so that we represent everyone in the workplace of every diversity, every background, every team. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to make this summer the summer where people fight back when they have the ability, the confidence and the organisational skills to organise. And that means getting back to your workplace, getting your resolutions through your branches, demanding action of your executive committees and your union officers. If you're not in a union, get in a union. <laughs> so I want to you all. I've spoken to you too much this week. It's no good having a profile on whatever it is. I didn't even know what trending was until Monday. <laughs> I was an old geezer. And now I found out. Apparently it's quite good. But there you go. It's no good having that profile if we do not deliver for the workers. And that's what trade unionism and strike action and campaigning is all about. So I'm telling the employees now in the government, we will negotiate. But we will not surrender. We will not give way. a huge change in conditions and a pay rise that suits the cost of living crisis. Those are simple demands. Give it to us or there'll be more strike action through the summer. So let's campaign. Let's fight. Let's win.